Okay, so as Helen just said, MDL Marinas is very much leisure marina based um, industry. So you'll find it's a bit different. I'll make sure I'm talking into this. Um, so yeah, so basically I just want to give you a bit of a background and I'm going to focus predominantly on marina operative roles. So there, there's a lot more to it actually. It's a lot more goes on in a marina environment than you would Im imagine. But um, I will touch upon it, but we're just out there. So if you are interested in learning a bit more, then please do just come and see us. So um, I'll just get on to my first slide. So we are part of the Yatterton Group. Yatterton um, is a village up in, uh, near Reading. Um, it's, and we're owned by a family, a, a, a quite a well-known family, the Iliff family. Um, they've got interest in agriculture, they, make, they, they have a big Christmas tree industry, and they've got a huge property business as well. So but MDR Marinas, we are the biggest headcount for them in their group. So um, that's kind of the background to where we are. They're, they're our group company. So we've got 19 marinas across the south of England. And if you think about from sort of Ipswich right through to Plymouth, we're dotted along and there's some sense to that, obviously, for boaters. So um, we've got a, a mixture of river marinas and coastal marinas. So the range of roles that we have, and as I say, I will focus more on marina ops in here, but it's a, such as a marina operative, that's walking the pontoons, that's lifting boats, parking boats. Um, it's, it's a very customer service focused role as well because you've got all, the all our berthers coming in needing support and help. We also have boat yards where we stack the boats um, and we also uh, wash the boats, look after the boats, do various things and liaise with boat repairers as well. So. They're the sort of roles, and that in a marina structure works the right way up to there's a marina manager on each of our marinas, and there's admin support and the usual sorts of roles you'd expect in that marina, providing the customer service. So the sort of people that we really look for, actually, is people that are, they're keen on customer service and they put that at the heart of everything we do. So an enthusiasm for, you know, if you think about it, you're looking after somebody's toy, expensive toy, something that their disposable income they've saved up for. So you've got to be enthusiastic about this. You've got to engage with the customer. So actually, customer service is a really key skill, and we do a lot of training on that. And then all the practical skills that go with it, like how do you lift the boat out of the water safely, all of those things get taught to people as well. So I will show you some of the pathway. But the point around what we look for, it's very much enthusiasm. If you like boating, you know, and you like being in a marina environment, it's kind of bringing a hobby to life into your job, into your career. So, you know, it, it would be something that would interest you. Um, just touching a little bit about, so how do we reward and do we develop people? Um, and we also are looking at, talk about apprenticeships, I'll just part that for a second. But we do, uh, uh, you know, we train our people very much so. We do look to develop you. Um, you know, we believe in investing in people that join us, certainly that come in as an entry level into the business at a marina. So as soon as you start, you will find yourself being put through some development. So it's, it's a good place to start a career if you're not sure what you want to do, but you do like being outside and near the coast. We do, um, we have various you know, benefits, usual types of benefits that you'd expect. We do lots of sort of internal um, sort of awards. We have a STARS programme, an MDL STAR, that every month somebody gets selected as a STAR, so a bit like an employee recognition. Um, but we've also just, with the apprenticeships now, with this, we've all been weighted for the government with the levy, and now we all know pretty much what we're doing. Um, we are really now looking at entering into more apprenticeships with people. So types of roles that we would look at would be this typical admin, marketing, finance perhaps, um, those sorts of roles. Now, there is, there is a lot of dialogue going on between us and, and colleges around marina specialist apprentices roles, apprenticeship roles, um, but that's quite, it's still quite in its infancy. It's quite a small sector, marinas. If you think of us, we're part of maritime, but marinas is actually really quite a small sector, and we're trying to help be a part of building that into a more defined sector. So entry level, as I say, coming in as a marina operative, if you think, oh, you'd like to try that out, seasonal op roles do come up quite frequently, and we are recruiting for this summer season. So if you think we're quite seasonal, summer it's very busy in a marina, winter it's a bit quieter. Okay, and just other areas of our business is um, estates, property management. We've got 90 marinas, we've got lots of tenants, with lots of units that they, they let from us. Um, so we, we do employ a team of people that manage that. That's a mixture of residential managers, um, RICS chartered commercial surveyors, um, and facilities management. So these people, the surveyors, would, would look after things like the, the lease renewals, the service charges, those sorts of things. So if you've got any background in that, you're interested, come and have a chat. 
The consultancy technical services part of the business is, is a small part of the business. Obviously, we need to maintain our marinas, so we do need a degree of civil engineering involvement. So we've got a small team that do that. We also have a consultancy um, element to that where people are looking to uh, build a new marina in a new location and we help to design and configure that. So that's quite a small team too. So as you can see, it's quite a lot going on in, in uh, what we do. It's not just about parking the boats. So if you think about a career, and if we just focus now about um, coming in as a marina operative, we do have our own unique competency training framework, which we will accredit to you in various qualifications, which is that's, that's um, national plant, you've got chartered marine management, IOSH is health and safety. So as soon as you come in, you start to get trained. We also look to cross-train people in various elements of the marina ops role. So the you, marina operative actually is going to be built into a far more generic, broad skill set, which makes it more interesting for people to develop. So um, we've got this training matrix of the courses, which I'll show you a bit of an example of in a second. Um, the core training you get within the first three months, you've been with us for three months, you've already started doing something in the marina, you will start your training. And then, we get, then you can build on your specialist skills. If you want to learn how to lift a very large yacht out of the water, that's the sort of training that we'll provide you. And believe me, that is quite actually quite a difficult task. And that can all be done in the first year of joining us. So... It's one of these little scattered slides. I love these when you do it at Toss House. Um, so career, so marina competency pathway. So as I say, first three months, typical stuff you'd do. VHS certification. So, you know, we do need to navigate people into the marinas. Of the, you know, always love a bit of a clash of boats. And also core health and safety. We see that as really important. You know, if you think of the um, risks in the marinas, we do put health and safety at, at the forefront of what we do. And then between three and 12 months, there's opportunity for you to do your, you know, the specialist roles, um, that, such as, I say, your national plant, forklift, crane operation, hoist operation. So if you ever wander into a marina and see some boats moving around and hear lots of beep, beep, bleeping around, you know, this is the sort of stuff's going on. They are lifting incredibly heavy boats, and it's, it's actually really quite a complex process. And then once you've done all that, and if you really like working in that marina environment, and it suits you to be outside in all weathers with the wet weather gear on, and you love it, but you actually think, I'd like to run one of these, there is actually a specific course, a Certified Marina Manager, and we will sponsor people in that. So there's a really clear de path, uh, development pathway here for people. Okay? And just to say, as I said a minute ago, we're recruiting for the season. So we do have casual workers, basically, that come in, seasonal contracts. So if you're interested in trying it out in the summer or you haven't found anything, you know, approach us online. There's the link. Or come and see me at just in the side there, and I can give you some more details. But if you just want a three-month seasonal role to come and just, uh, you know, t have a taster, this is quite a good way of doing it. It'll give you a bit of an exposure to that, that side of the uh, industry. So I'll hand you across now to... Red Funnel, and they'll tell you about them. It's a different side of maritime. Thank you. Okay, good morning, everybody. Um, right, how many engineers in the room? Fantastic. Look at that. That is good. Right, uh, I'm going to give you just a, a bit of an overview of the shipping industry in total. Um, that's a huge subject, and I'm not going to be able to cover it all properly. But um, I think the, the first thing to say, if, if you want a career in maritime and shipping, the first thing you've done that's right is you're here. You're, in the, you're right by the Solent. And if you think about all of the opportunities that there are uh, in this region, being here in Southampton, right on the Solent, uh, that's the first thing. And just to try and illustrate some of that, so if you're interested in designing ships, uh, so Lloyd's Register are here in Southampton, the Maritime and Coast Guard Agency, the MCA, who regulate uh, all of shipping in the UK, they're based here as well. Um, we're right beside the biggest cruise port in the UK um, and also one of the largest cargo and freight terminals in the world. It's ABP, the port of Southampton. Uh, and I would say this, wouldn't I? Uh, Red Funnel, we operate 30,000 crossings a year across to the island. It's a, it's a major ferry port uh, as well. Um, just across the water uh, on the island is the centre of world yachting. Uh, you've probably heard of Cow's Week, um, but it's also got a manufacturing side to it as well, which I'm going to talk about uh, a little bit more 
uh, that we had one of our new ships actually built uh, on the island, and there's a short video in a minute to tell that story. But also, uh, Centre of Excellence for Composite Manufacturing is now based on the Isle of Wight, uh, and that covers everything to do with composites and has a particular focus on uh, marine as well. So if you think about a career in shipping, that, that is huge. That can be from, you want to be involved in designing ships, maintaining them, operating them uh, as actual uh, on board, but then there's all the support side to it as well. So uh, helping to operate the terminals as well as all the back office staff uh, that, that we have in the office. And in terms of designing ships, um, here around the Solent and in Southampton, uh, there, are, there are large ships and, and dry docks for repairing through to uh, yacht design and of course just a little down the road in that place begins with P that we don't talk about very much in Southampton, you've got Ben Ainsley Racing uh, destined to bring the America's Cup to the UK. Um, one other aspect of maritime that's here in Southampton, the National Oceanographic Centre, uh, everything to do with the sea and the oceans takes place in there. So in terms of career opportunities, I think there's engineers, scientists, uh, production management, hospitality, customer service, uh, operations, whether that be from, uh, as we would call them, the officers, so um, people who start as a, a junior cadet make their way through and within Red Funnel, we have classic examples of uh, people who joined us as a young cadet and are now master of one of our ferries, and they've just worked their way through. Um, deck hands, so the guys who do all the other uh, aspects of operating the ship, terminal management, uh, and of course, engineers. And those of you who are interested in engineering, um, it's great to see there is a shortage, without question, of engineers in the marine industry. And if you're coming into that, I think you'll have plenty of opportunities uh, to follow. Um, so just to, rather than listen to me, um, two years ago, Red Funnel decided that it wanted a new vessel, uh, one of our high-speed uh, craft that we use for passenger crossings to the island. And we decided to have it built here in the Solent, actually built uh, on the Isle of Wight. Uh, and that marked the return of manufacturing of that type of vessel to the UK after a, a very long gap. So we'll show that video in just a second. As uh, Joanna just said, a great way to get into this industry is the fact that it is very seasonal. So we're much busier in the summer than we are in the winter. Uh, and that tends to be the time when you guys, of course, are uh, on vacation. Actually, it's a good time to come and work for us. You get to see what it's like. What is it uh, like to work in the, in the marine industry or maritime industry? Uh, and you earn some money as well. So it's got to be good news. So um, without further ado then, if we can show the video. Last year, Isle of Wight ferry operator Red Funnel announced plans to bring the building of high-speed passenger catamarans back to the UK with the hiring of a local firm, Shamara Refit. A year on, we return to the Isle of Wight as the new Red Jet 6 vessel is ready to set sail. Here's Nina Warhurst. Crowds are gathering for an historic day for the Isle of Wight and for the British shipbuilding industry. Because today, Red Jet 6, a brand new high-speed catamaran, sets sail for the first time. It will serve the people of the island, but it will mean more to them because it was built by them. Well, uh, yeah, it's a little bit of lump in throat moment, I suppose, really. Um, there's a big attachment, emotional attachment people get with boats. And I suppose because, um, you know, this was uh, our idea or my team's idea that we could do this by having the boat built here, uh, it being world class and be a catalyst for more industry to come as well. So, yeah, it's really, really exciting. Will we see a tear in your eye then, Kevin? Um, I'll try and be uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, professional about it, but yeah, it's going to be it's going to be an important moment. 
Here to officially name the vessel, a member of the royal family with a long relationship with the island, Her Royal Highness Princess Anne. I name this ship Red Jet 6, and may God bless her and all who sail in her. In building Red Jet 6, Red Funnel listened to customers who said they wanted USB ports, high speed Wi Fi, and an onboard toilet. The leather seats are extra comfy, and four engines instead of two means it'll keep moving even if a water jet gets blocked. Plus, it's Red Funnel's most environmentally sound vessel yet. But perhaps more important than any of the features is that Red Jet 6 was built here on the island by local company Shamara Refit, returning fast ferry building to the UK after a gap of 16 years. I think what it does is it'll prove that we can build fast ferries um, on the Isle of Wight and in the UK. This is, you know, this is a, a, a complicated boat. It's one of the biggest and highest speed ferry operations in the world. You know, to get to Southampton in 23 minutes, you have to have a high speed ferry. In the fast ferry world, this is a, um, you know, this is, is a milestone really. Red Funnel really is a key part of island life. Talk to the children here, and many of them are related to people who worked on the building of Red Jet 6. And it's hoped that the vessel's success will lead to a wealth of future employment opportunities. Toby joined the Red Jet 6 team as an apprentice and worked on the mast and engine and jet rooms. A an amazing start to your career and apprenticeship working on a vessel like this, but what does it mean for the wider community here that it was built here on the Isle of Wight? Um, really, I would say it's, it's proud for everyone, you know, everyone should be proud. It's, uh, it's an island thing built by the island on the island for the island. Um, you know, everyone can use it, all my friends can use it, everyone I know really, which is uh, quite, quite a good thing. Toby's hoping to stay with Shamara Refit, working on more projects secured from the success of Red Jet 6. More contracts mean more jobs. No wonder the island's celebrating. And Marie, it is an amazing atmosphere today, yeah. isn't it? A big crowd come down to see the launch of Red Jet 6. But what are the more long-term implications for business communities here? Well, I think today is a landmark day. I mean, obviously, the investment in Red Jet 6, the fact that it was built on the island and it showcases all the talent and strength of the island, I think it's a massive step forward for advanced manufacturing on the island itself. Brilliant for Marina Maritime and the Solent. And it really does cement our position as the global leader for Marina Maritime time and uh, as I say fantastic day fantastic crowd and she's off meaning much more than the successful building of one high-speed catamaran because Red Jet 6 represents a bright future for maritime building in the UK so there you go thank you very much uh, that was only possible by the skills of the people obviously that uh, were employed by Shamara and uh, employed by Red Funnel as well so I wish you well with your careers in the uh, maritime and shipping industry. Thank you.